Uh, my name is Woody Hastings. I'm a professor, a research professor of molecular and cellular biology uh, at Harvard University in Cambridge. And I want to tell a remarkable story about the discovery of quorum sensing, how it came from our, our experiments in which we discovered auto, what we called auto-induction at the time. It's a more proper word, perhaps, but quorum sensing also describes it. Now, I was completely concerned about it uh, with no objective, uh, no idea that it would ever lead to anything important. Lead to any, it was just a question, why do cells grow exponentially and have certain processes, bioluminescence for one, that uh, don't turn on for three hours and then turn on uh, very, very fast. It's very kind. Of, so it was a basic question. And, and really, this is what basic research is, is seeing phenomena. As St. Georgie, you <coughs> see what many people have seen and think what no one else has thought is, is the idea of discovery. Uh, it is also called non-directed research. It means nobody else directs it. It doesn't mean you don't direct it. You better direct it. And we directed our, our efforts at trying to, to understand why these, these bacteria didn't, for many hours, turn on their genes. It starts really with uh, about uh, 10 years of, in my laboratory, I saw graphs like this in which the cells grow exponentially Note on the ordinate uh, that the uh, scale is uh, uh, logarithmic, whereas the uh, bioluminescence for the first three hours didn't rise at all. Well, uh, I didn't. Uh, I was trying to find this out when I got a phone call from a graduate student at the University of Chicago. Uh, his name was Kenneth Nielsen. And he said, I'm a, a, a uh, doing the genetics of bioluminescence in bacteria and I'm having trouble in getting cells to produce luciferase. Ah, I said, and I thought of this experiment. I'm showing that luciferase wouldn't always be there. I urged him to come to, to, to enroll in the physiology course at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole and uh, we would use his spare time in that course, which is non-existent, of course, to uh, study this phenomenon that I was so concerned about. And uh, this graph illustrates the phenomenon that Nielsen came to study with me. And he concluded that, in fact, uh, uh, the first three hours, there was no uh, <coughs> synthesis of messenger RNA. There was no synthesis of luciferase protein, and there was no activity of luciferase. There were many alternatives to that that possibility. You had to, we had to show that that was true, and we concluded that in fact the first three hours was at the time at which the cells were producing a substance, which was then in, responsible for the. Uh, <coughs> Uh, synthesis of messenger RNA for luciferase, that that substance was, in effect, an inducer. And we said, well, this is auto-induction. It's doing it all by itself. You don't have to add anything to get any, to get uh, cells. And we took uh, 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 me medium after cells. We uh, removed the cells, and we had a clear medium that had been used for, uh, for uh, growing a batch of cells. And we showed that we could isolate from that uh, medium a substance that would, uh, would uh, <coughs> cause cells at low density to emit light. Well, that was confirmed uh, beautifully by uh, Eberhard and Nielsen in later experiments. Eberhard, uh, in, the, in the decade uh, uh, following our publication of the original paper, 
was able to uh, work out the structure of uh, the autoinducer, what we call the autoinducer, uh, to be a homoserine lactone shown here, and uh, to show that, in fact, uh, uh, different chain lengths were used by specific bacteria to, uh, to, to act as autoinducers, and they would not uh, respond. Uh, uh, Peter Greenberg uh, became involved in this and showed that very, very importantly, uh, cells uh, could uh, cells could communicate with other species by different uh, <coughs> different chain lengths uh, out of uh, uh, homoserine lactones like this. So having this molecule that, uh, uh, identified, he, he went on to synthesize it and made it available to Ken Nielsen, who with his group was able to do the definitive experiments uh, to, to show what we had shown with spent medium. He showed with pure uh, synthesized uh, <coughs> uh, autoinducer. And here's the way he did it. Uh, it's a funny graph, and you have to study it a little bit. But he uh, put it in a chemostat to cause cells to be fixed at a certain cell density. And as the cells got to, down to a certain cell density, the, their bioluminescence just turned off. Uh, <clears throat> and then at that point, they, uh, they kept the cell density at this level. They kept the... Uh, and glycerol concentration at this level, and added autoinducer. They added no more glycerol. They, uh, uh, the cells responded by immediately synthesizing luciferase, even though they were very few in number. There is no quorum there, I can assure you. This summarizes, I think, the, the fact that, uh, that uh, <coughs> uh, the phenomenon was uh, established by 1980, 81, very clearly that, uh, that the, the bioluminescent bacteria, luciferase, was uh, stimulated by virtue of a substance in the medium produced by the cells themselves. Uh, many people, many of colleagues, uh, did, not, uh, did not really agree with this conclusion, they didn't think this could be, or they thought it was some quirky uh, phenomenon associated with, uh, with luminous bacteria, and that all didn't apply to bacteriology in general, or bacteria in general. And uh, by 1990, as, uh, as outlined in Bonnie Bassler's beautiful expose in this series, uh, I hope you will get to uh, re read that. Uh, this turned out, uh, she and others showed that the uh, genes responsible for this phenomenon were present in all kinds of bacteria uh, and that they were especially important in, in disease bacteria. Well, the production of toxic substances was, was regulated by organ induction. Well, how did, how did the, 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 the and name quorum sensing uh, displace auto-induction for this phenomenon. It is described by Pete Greenberg as uh, occurring at a dinner where he and several colleagues were discussing the phenomenon uh, with other non-scientists. And they, uh, one of the non-scientists who happened to be a lawyer, of course, uh, said, aha, that phenomenon is really a quorum sensing. And only when the bacteria get to a certain level in the uh, uh, culture, do there's enough uh, autoinducer produced to, to cause the phenomenon. We'll just call it corn sensing. And he, he introduced the term, uh, Greenberg did, and that from then on, it, it, uh, his history, it, it has turned out to be extraordinarily important in many different uh, disease states, uh, of biofilms, uh, utilize auto-induction, uh, toxic cells, toxic species, 
Uh, the toxin is regulated by auto-induction, by quorum sensing, only when a quorum of cells, that is a lot of cells, have infected the body of the organism, you, let's say, uh, do, do the uh, cells produce the toxin and uh, cause uh, damage, uh, and uh, they really cause damage at this point. And if they produced a small amount of the, a smaller amount of the toxin with time, they would, in fact, uh, uh, defeat the purpose because the organism would, if you will, in some sense or in some way, sense the uh, uh, presence of these bacteria and raise its defenses against it. So th this illustrates that basic research can lead to phenomena and does lead to phenomena. This is only one of many examples uh, uh, that will the re lead to results that will uh, have very, very important applications such as uh, auto-induction does. Thank you very much.